Welcome to Open Door Church's worship service. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand. I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone. At the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Today's scripture is Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perirites, the Hebites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. Now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Mo Moses said to God, Who am I that sh I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am 
who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. This is the word of God. Let us pray. Thank you for giving us today's scripture. Through today's scripture, we thank for the guidance of a God who loves us and always plans for us. As Christians, we feel that God is always calling us for God's plan. We are here to receive your words. We are here to follow your plan. And we are here to feel your love. Use us for your plans and call us for your love. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In a world marked by imperfections, individuals navigate their lives with inherent flaws. 
Often, people grapple with a sense of shame linked to these imperfections, leading them to seek ways to conceal them. These responses can be culturally influenced and traced back to the earliest human beings, Adam and Eve. In their initial state, they existed without shame, unburdened by the need to hide anything. Regrettably, after succumbing to the serpent's temptation and consuming the forbidden fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they were overcome by shame. In a bid to hide their newfound awareness, they fashioned leaves into clothing. Consequently, when God beckoned them, they sought refuge behind the shelter of a tree. In this intricate dance of existence, a holy God actively engages with humanity to oversee an imperfect world. Holiness is essential for individuals who aspire to stand before God without shame. Drawing from Wesley's teachings, holiness manifests as the state of being sanctified through the indwelling and actions of God. The path to embody holiness and to connect with the divine presence within us raises the question. What steps are imperative to achieve this sacred transformation? Building up in the previous sermon's narrative, we find Moses at the center of our exploration once again. Moses' early life was marked by the, the assistance of many individuals during his birth. Yet, despite these auspicious beginnings, his imperfections would later come to the forefront. An uncontrollable surge of anger within him led to a grave act, the killing of an Egyptian overseer who oppressed the Israelites. Haunted by this transgression and unable to confront his guilt, Moses concealed the crime. However, when confronted by the Israelites regarding the incident, the weight of shame settled upon him, prompting him to flee into the wilderness. This retreat was driven by his desire to evade accountability for his actions. Amidst the solitude of the Midian wilderness, Moses encountered a scene where shepherds obstructed women from assessing water for their sheep. Compelled by his innate sense of justice, he intervened and provided assistance to these women. Grateful for his intervention, they recounted the episode to their father, Rule, also known as Jethro, who happened to be Moses' father-in-law. Upon extending an invitation, Jethro welcomed Moses into his household, offering him a place to reside. Thus, Moses found himself without a refuge, and his alignment with Jethro's household was sealed with the marriage between Moses and Jethro's daughter, Zipporah. Our scripture journey unfolds with Moses, who, having become a part of Jethro's family, shepherds his flock through the wilderness. As recounted in chapter 3, verse 1, he ventures to Mount Horeb, later recognized as Mount Sinai, the hallowed uh, location where the Ten Commandments were be bestowed upon him. Verse 2 presents a remarkable sight, an angel of God manifested as a blazing fire within a bush. Although it was not uncommon for dry and scorching wilderness vegetation to ignite, the extraordinary aspect lay in the fact that the bush remained unscathed by the flames. Intrigued, Moses approaches for a closer look, prompting God's call. Moses, Moses, to which Moses responds, here I am. In verse 5, God's command rings out, remove your sandals, 
for the ground on which you stand is holy. Across the ancient Near East, removing one's footwear signified entering a sacred space. This custom extended to priests within the temple, precincts and audiences with royalty. While interpretations abound, the core of God's instruction to Moses resonates with guiding him toward holiness. In a state of shame and concealed remorse, Moses had fled into the wilderness to obscure his past actions. In this self-imposed isolation, he lost the connection with God and the sacred, much like Adam and Eve, who, post-temptation, sought refuge from divine presence. However, God, who is aware of all things, invites Moses to unveil his hidden burdens, to lay bare his secrets, and to invite God into his uh, vulnerability. Holiness isn't synonymous with perfection. It stems from open confession before God and inviting divine presence into the depths of one's being. Even in my pastoral role, I too am far from impeccably embodying all of Scripture's teachings. My shoes remain on while in the church office, deviating from the ancient priestly custom. Nevertheless, holiness entails embracing honesty before God, regardless of shoe removal. Verse 6 underscores God's identification as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prompting Moses to veil his face in awe of this divine encounter. Falling before God in a posture of reverence reflects profound respect for the divine majesty. In verses 7 to 10, God addresses Moses, revealing, I have observed the oppression of my people in Egypt, and I have heard their cries of distress. I will rescue them and lead them to a land flowing with milk and honey. This declaration underscores God's intimate awareness of human suffering rooted in the fairy bush's symbolism. The Hebrew word for bush holds significance, embodying the oppressed. This portrayal parallels their pain as an absence of God. Through the fairy symbol, God conveys a resounding message. I am attuned to the cries of the suffering, and I am present in their midst. Turning to verse 11, we find Moses grapp grappling with the fundamental concern, how we will lead the people out of their bondage. In response, God reassures Moses that his constant presence will accompany him, assure, assuring Moses that their future worship at this very place will signify his divine commission. Moving to verse 13, Moses raises another query, pondering how to respond when the Israelites ask for God's name. In that era, the name of God varied, such as Elohim, or Yahweh, depending on linguistic and cultural distinctions. God's response resounds with a profound revelation. I am who I am. This declaration encapsulates the essence of the Holy One. A holy God exists in absolute independence, self-sufficient, and sovereign over all creation. This self-contained nature defines God, who requires no external reliance. However, recognizing the potential challenge of this revelation for the Israelites, God provides Moses with a more relatable reply. Tell them, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sent me to you. This is my name forever to you. This revelation unveils the depth of God's nature, 
challenging our comprehension. God is beyond human definition, encompassing existence itself. The proclamation of I am captures the eternal, unchanging essence of the divine, devoid of dependency of or alteration. This concept reverberates with the declaration in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just as God's name is unchanging, so is his character. In embracing the name I am, we encounter a God who defies human limitations. God is not confined to human understandings, cultural boundaries, or linguistic constructs. He is the very essence of being, and this revelation calls us to approach Him with awe and humility. As we reflect upon this profound encounter between God and Moses, may we be inspired to seek the unchanging and eternal nature of God in our lives allowing his presence to guide our paths and illuminate our understanding. The passage before us reveals three transformative paths towards becoming holy individuals. First, God's presence manifested in the burning bush. God actively sought out of out the voices of the oppressed, igniting the divine spark within each soul. To elevate human dignity beyond the bonds of slavery, God instituted the Sabbath, a day of rest and renewal. This holy day calls us to remember and honor our inherent worth, celebrating the divine image within us. The second path involves shedding pretenses and bearing our souls before God much like Moses removing his shoes on holy ground. Though God is intimately aware of our depths, he calls us to confess openly. God's desire is not for flawless perfection. Rather, he seeks transparent honesty from us as his beloved children. This disposition fosters intimacy with God enabling us to align our hearts with his divine will. The final path rests in the profound declaration, I am. God's assertion of self-sufficiency, unshaken by external factors, resonates deeply. While human imperfection is undeniable, moments of perfect holiness grace our lives. At birth, we emerge into the world unashamed and pure, proclaiming our existence with an uh, uninhibited cry. In this sacred moment, we declare, I am. This unique juncture encapsulates life's sanctify. Indeed, we are not without flaws. However, we are holy beings recipients of God's creative blessing. Embrace these gifts and hold your life in reverence. Cherish each moment and cultivate self-love. As this week unfolds, may you consecrate the Sabbath, transforming it into a holy space. Embrace the courage to lay bare your heart before God without shame. Just as God proclaims, I am who I am. Let your life resonate with the sacred affirmation, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen.
Offering the faith for giving our hearts in front of God. Let us pray. God of power and might, we, like Peter, struggle with the image of a Savior sent to suffer and die. We may seem to be doing great in following Christ, but we to stumble at this point. Perhaps we stumble because we know that what follow is Christ's call to us to deny ourselves and pick up a cross of our own in order to follow. As we bring gifts for the work of building your kingdom, help us to learn to deny, carry, and follow. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Receive this good news. You are beloved children of God, called and equipped to be agents of divine love in the world. And remember, you do not go alone. God goes before you, with you, and behind you wherever you go. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> 